been really good. Yeah, it was um, it was really a fascinating set of travels this time. I, I met some really interesting people who, um, you know, some of whom were actually working on interesting projects, and then other people who just had a really interesting perspective on things. So uh, I feel like I I learned a lot, but I'm definitely still doing a lot of work processing uh, everything I saw and everybody who I talked to. Um, so yeah, I would say overall things are going very well. Yeah, I guess it's it's difficult to describe. How long were you gone? For two months or longer? Yeah, it was it was about two months, and then um, I I got back sometime last week. But things have just been moving super fast, so I I feel like uh, I'm still kind of in that hectic travel state, even though it's starting to settle down a bit. Mm. And uh, and which countries were you? Because um, you so. Yeah, I started in Uganda, then I went to Ethiopia, Kenya, Nigeria, and finished in Ghana, which is where I spent most of the trip. Wow. I've I've never I've only been to South Africa, so um I'm very jealous. Yeah, I've uh, someday I I hope to go to South Africa, but so far I haven't uh been fortunate enough to make it. Mm. Nice, nice. Um Yeah, I just got a message from Griff, so he's going to be a little bit late, but um, we can, of course, already start. Um, so let's start with a check-in. So for people who will watch the stream afterwards, I already know one person, that was Pete, who's going to have a call with Danny, uh, which is great. Um, so this is our communications call. So for people who uh, want to check the notes, um, they're on github.com slash given slash communication. And if you install uh, the Zenhub, um extension then you can see the board which is which is really practical um but so first checking in um i'm not distracted just maybe by taking a little bit of notes on uh, the different issues and my intention is to catch up on everything that's been happening um i've been doing that in the past week and it's i'm really happy to see that there was a comps meeting last week uh and uh <laughs> thanks for pushing that danny because i saw you were pushing this too Uh, and uh, yeah, and so the intention is just to go through some of the things that are urgent and less urgent to get a little bit of an overview again. And I give it to Adam. Hey, switch my mic on there. Yeah, um, I must admit that I'm a little bit distracted because I'm in the process of moving, which as we all know, um, can be a distracting thing. So uh, I will try to ignore all the boxes and pots and pans on the floor around me and uh, do my best to, to give 100% of my focus to the meeting. Uh, and I will kick it over to Danny. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, I don't have any distractions here today. Uh, my intention is to dive deeper into what's in the communications issues see where I can be of service there, and generally reconnect with you all. And I'll pass it to Kai. Hey guys, just uh, checking in to see how everybody is doing, especially Chris, nice to see you home. Um, I don't have, I will be off in 20 minutes, uh, and I'm just uh, starting to also write something in the Sun Hub, so if you have anything that uh, you need me for, Please prioritize a little. And oh. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Let's do that then. Um, um, yeah, well, there's a few things for Kai. So indeed, just like, let's just jump in and we'll, we'll see if we, we, we won't cover all the issues, but just of, uh, some of the... Um, some of the things that I was, that were high in my head. So yeah, I see you adding it, Kai. Um, the, for the t-shirts, that that is indeed the first question like what what's what's the status i read up in the from the governance meeting notes um you wanted to continue with the um, with the dreamcatcher uh, design right did you check the channel so if not i will quickly show it here griff sent it to me uh the one that i think it's gonna be but i haven't i haven't read the entire channel because i'll just show it off because it's so nice so we're <laughs> stage here can you yeah. see that's the one i saw yeah it's really nice it's really that is amazing by lydia because i think it also gives us some direction to where to go with the galaxy thing uh, mm -hmm. also. 
Yeah, I really like it. Um, I'm, I'm still gonna like check it a little bit in more in detail. Um, what else? What what else was in there? I would just the the initial feedback that I would give is just um, this is this is a draft, right? Is the is the is the drawing? Is it gonna be colored in, or do you, or is the intention to leave it as it is? Because it's a T-shirt, um, and talking to the designer, there are some little things. But uh, for one thing, uh, it should stay one color. Yeah, I mean, it could be, I guess, like a gradient. But you know, there is some limitations when uh, when it comes to making shirts. And uh, what would be very helpful is to define uh, the sizes again, or at least say we do it like the last run. There could be something, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I still have you. these somewhere, so. Or give some input. And we will do the same, uh, like remember, we'll do the run with Benny again, and uh, I think, and I just, uh, yeah, I will communicate, we just need the numbers, uh, maybe. Okay. The, I'll I'll give you the numbers. the The thing with Ben Benny, I'll I'll let you handle it because, yeah, I I I didn't really think he was too efficient. But if you like him, I'll let you handle it because it caused me some quite some stress following up. But if you like him, you should definitely do it. Um, but um, no, my only feedback for the design would be quite that um, I would prefer that the logo is is more clear that you can see it a little bit better so maybe it's an easy fix and we can do this by just not having it just drawn a little bit but stronger maybe that's enough um but it's i showed it to some people and they didn't when they just viewed it they didn't, they didn't even see the give it logo in it so you that that's the only thing i would say but like, for the rest uh, of it, like griff also said there is uh, the opportunity to put like uh, the type logo somewhere on the back mm -hmm. And uh, we can put the Giveth logo there too, just for. Uh, I mean, yeah, I think Lydia wants it to make it a little more G like. I like it how it is. I don't know, it's a taste thing, but it will for sure make some uh, type logo somewhere. So you actually know it's uh, Giveth. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, um, let's, let's discuss it. By when, do you know by when, if we need it for. Um, the first event, which is the Web3 Summit, do you, have you already been in contact with Benny to see by when it could be printed? So we said we will be ready by DEF CON. So Web3 Summit would be one week earlier. I don't know if that's, uh, I mean, we're still in September. So I told Lydia to finish by the end of this week or have it uh, printed by the end of the week. Uh, yeah, I'll talk to, to our printer, so how long it's gonna take? Cool. Yeah, we'll be, because uh, we have now our uh, hacker space, so that's of course an ideal um, moment to like you know give it to the people who might actually wear it um, and and might be happy with it. So, but it's an it's definitely a nice design to to not just run around with give a branding. Danny, you wanted to say something. Oh no, it's just Oh no, sorry. I, I'm just getting to test out my new hotspot because the Wi-Fi uh, went down, so I'm back. <laughs> no problem. Um okay. So that is the logo, so that's coming up. Cool, cool, cool. Uh well the logo, the design for the shirt. Um the other thing I wanted to ask Kai was the um, the website. I saw passing by a message to um uh to Barbara, but I don't know if, if what what happened, if anything happened for the website. So we had a meeting about uh, the restructuring um, for the whole thing last week. And um, actually Amy, who is a friend of Lorelei, um, um, who is uh, also a designer and likes to do UI sketching and stuff. Um, she said she wanted to make something uh, to present this week. Uh, I haven't heard from her yet, but I'm gonna check in. Uh, and yeah, I've been busy learning more about uh, uh, how to have a good workflow in something like Figma. And uh, I made something for the um, hackathon where Deem and me are like the status. We're entering there. <laughs> so 
I started to make and design for this, and um, yeah, I want to make it develop it into a process in the next week. Um, but there, you're not talking about the website, right? The the were the other stuff you're working on. No, that is the website, like the transition from what we have now to the Galaxy website, and where I mean, your wireframe is one input, and uh, you know there's different components. And for in terms of like UI design, there is Amy now. I, don't, I haven't seen what she did uh, yet. Um, so I, I'm working on stuff. And um, yeah, there is your wireframe as well. And, uh, I, I want to put this, uh, this process more on Figma, but I first wanted to see if Amy comes up with something, and otherwise, I will just continue. OK, and um, for you, with Deem, it's some, it's, you're going to be at the status hackathon to, to, to work on the website as well or discuss the Figma thingies. No, that's for my uh, address. It's called now the, the MySpace thing. Ah, I didn't know about that one. You want to make a blockchain MySpace? Yeah, it's kind of a secret <laughs> now. It's still uh, <laughs> that would no, be extreme. Uh, we made, I made a design just for to check out Figma more, and uh, I have to say we can make a pretty good, good workflow. And you know, it's coming together. It's really many moving parts. Um, including changing the technology to make it more what you would like, like your little snippets, social snippets better and, you know, more cohesive. Um, yeah, talking about that one, I have, a, yeah, I was busy before and then I was gone, but do these snippets now work with the Wall of Fame? I haven't tested it yet. Me neither. <laughs> it's on, on the to-do. Um, okay, um, then uh, you're also working on the Decentral videos, right? Oh, yeah, um, I have, do you, yeah, why do you ask? <laughs> Just because you, that's one of the things I have your name on. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, I, so the ones that are technically good, I started to upload already, they're still on private, so uh, the interesting thing is I'm really looking for somebody maybe to release them or, you know, promote them, release them. It's usually something different. So I'm, I'm in a technical work of uploading it. I, I think half of them are in the state that they are, can be uploaded as is. And there is some talks that have like only half the audio or stuff. And oh. mm. so. I will prioritize the ones that are good, like yours, for example. Uh, uh. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to promote that one. <laughs> but um, yeah, so, um, but you're uploading them on our give, in a, on our give it. Uh, no, I, I'm the, because of maybe nakedness and maybe uh, complaints about like music that's in the background. Like you, YouTube can throw the video off for that reason. We open a new channel with Cam, and if you're interested, you can um, we can make you a manager as well. It's a decentralist YouTube, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, if if there's nakedness, they're gonna throw us off anyways. No, um, no, no. No. <laughs> And you know, it, it, what I'm saying is it does not compromise our channel anyway. Like, if there is a problem later on with one of the videos. It's on this new channel's reputation and not on our YouTube. But actually, the guidelines say if there is, like, if it's an educational video and the nakedness is with, it comes with the, the topic, usually, uh, it's fine. I think here it comes out of circumstance. And yeah. And I think, honestly, I haven't seen a lot of naked people at our talks. Well, there's uh, one or two like passing by, you know, it, you never know. See, like, what, you can spot somebody passing by and flag the video. And if the, chan if the video gets a problem, it's not so bad. But if five videos get a problem, the channel might get a problem. And that, that's yeah, but the thing, you know, well, so the reason I, the reason I ask is just because, um, we have we have like 300 subscribers or something and we have a network 
And uh, on the other one, there's 10 subscribers, I think. And if we want to promote it a little bit and use it as promotion for Give It, uh, as being one of the Give It initiatives, which the central is, to me, it makes sense to have it also on our YouTube. And if someone reviews the videos, actually watches them, and that we just checked that there's no nudity in it, I think we should be fine. That's what Lindsay was doing for the others anyways. There is also the problem with music, background music. So it's not, yeah, it's, it's a mod. It, anyway, I, I think, uh, I mean, I started already with this. So um, I will share the file so people can re-upload if they want to. Um, I, it would make more sense to cut a little video with like uh, some good topics or some good like statements of people and make a maybe a little trailer for the this thing and don't fear like there is so many things coming up uh, i think there will be some content down the line from uh, all those meetups that I come yeah, yeah definitely but to me it was just it's it's talks about decentralization and it's to me, it's like it's social coding, it's governance, it's all these things, and it's beautiful content for Give It to me. So I really think it makes more sense to have it on our channel. But yeah, that's my opinion. Um, but if you guys, yeah, you're editing it, so you're doing it. So I mean, I asked Griff, he said he, he does not care either way. He, it's, he seems like he does not want to, like, he, he wants to lose affiliation as well, it seems. Like, he wants to separate. Uh, that is oh, yeah. okay. from give it a little at least okay good to know well yeah maybe indeed we can do a trailer or it can just promote it but to me it makes less sense to have create a new channel and have that grow and and draw people over there if, if we get, get them on our channel they can discover give it which makes also sense that's that's kind of i'm always just thinking in like how can how can we use it for given um and at the same time like educate people um, okay. Well, in any case, you still have some work on it, so we'll see. And I don't, I don't mind promoting it, of course. Um, but then, uh, then I'll, I can just like watch. I haven't had a chance to watch them, anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the talks, so I can just watch a talk, and whenever I watch a talk, and then I can just schedule it in and promote it on, on Twitter, uh, etc. If you have like three talks you really like, we can re-upload them. But this year, I, w I wouldn't say from just looking through that the. The quality of content, technical and like, like warrants that we put every talk there. There are mm. some nice talks, but people talk like mouses, and you can. It it, it was very difficult technical conditions. In yeah, the, and also the camera that wasn't really in in the middle, right? That's not such a problem. It's mostly mm. like um, music driving by, sandstorms, power cuts. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right um okay no cool indeed then we maybe can upload like some of them that really are powerful and use these okay cool 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 um next little topic that i wanted to talk about with you kai is um the bounty source banner i don't know if you saw that one that we can have a banner on um the bounty source website which is a, a side project of kenya um i just wanted to check in quickly with you if that is something technical that you can do like make animated banners or something um sure cool uh yeah because i i i'm not a flash animator or whatever they make banners these days in uh, it's a great thing for the uh design channel to like for somebody to make it actually yeah right true we can just post it there as soon as we decide what what needs to be on there um so Talking about that one, I'm completely open to opinions on this. So we have banner space and bounty source as a website to like what it says to like put up bounties, et cetera, for um, the blockchain space for people who need developers, et cetera. So there we can promote like, hey, if you want to do coding, you can come here. Um, Yaler uh, proposed to use it for social coding specifically. Um, we can just, in general, drive them to give it and say that uh, have a more generic message. Uh, we can, if we need uh, a developer specifically for the dev team, for the dev dev team, that's also a possibility. I don't know. Any thoughts, anyone? 
Um, yes, but I think we could put a flag in that for later. Yeah, I think um, so too. I think I don't think it's super urgent. Mm -hmm. In 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 light of like certain developments, uh, I think it makes sense to like just wait wait a week or two and see um, how yeah, certain I mean, things evolve. I would definitely say yes. It's something that is on the horizon, but more information needs to come up to to be ready to talk about it. Yep, I agree. <laughs> okay. So um, let's let's put a pin in that one. Um, boop, 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 boom. What else, Kai? Is there something else you wanted to discuss that is that that has your name? I don't see anything immediately. Um, I would really like to give a better update on what's happening with the websites or our websites, but maybe not now. I think there's lots of stuff you have in here. Um, yeah, maybe we can maybe we can do a separate chat as soon as you have from um, the person I forgot the name of. If you talk to her, and then we can discuss like, hey, these are next steps. Let's do it this and that way. That's cool. I will ping her now and tell you later this week. Cool. Perfect. Um, and that. Oh yeah, no, I did have a quick other question about the central. Actually, what are you going to do with the podcasts? I was just wondering. Um, are you in the channel? Then uh, Joshua and Bowen have the data, I think. And uh, yeah, they were just going to create it somewhere. Okay. I don't know how it's going to be released or anything. Yeah. But they're working on it. Okay. I'm just going to write it down. All right. Forget it, Joshua and Bowen on podcasts. Hi, on the Decentralist. Oh yeah, and um, if you could add me on the Decentralist, uh, that would be cool. Um, uh, I'll just ping you. You know, it's like this strange thing that you can add me as an account manager or something, uh, and then I, I don't really need the full login unless it's easiest if you just add my account. So I put it here in the sidebar. Cool. Um, voila. Okay, and then I have some things in mind I want to talk about, but I've already talked enough for now. So first, what's on people's mind? Are there specific issues they first want to bring forward? With issues, I don't mean negative issues, just issues on the on the board. Ah, there's Griff. Mm. Griff was looking for a connection. Hey, Griff. Mm. Hey, hey, I've actually been listening for a while, but uh, uh, but yeah. Oh my so, God, uh, you have no more beard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> clean shaven, no more Santa. That's crazy. And, and just on the on the decentral videos, I have to vote that like just throw them up there. Not very many people will watch them unless they're promoted, and hopefully someone tells us that there's nudity before they flag it. But I don't I don't know if. Uh, I don't know if YouTube's AI will be able to distinguish the dragon that is actually a female with boobs or not, you know, or, you know, like, I don't know. Yeah, I think we'll be fine there. It's just for me, I think it's just such great talk that it would be good. Yeah, good. It's, it's what Give It is also about and, and everything that we're doing with social coding, with <laughs> governance. So it could be just great, yeah. a great and, promotion to like lead, have people discover also Give It and Decentral. And hopefully the podcast will happen too. So it's like as videos get taken down, oh well, you know, uh, we'll have the podcast. But the big thing I want to talk about, because it sounded like it's an open uh, discussion time, is the the node. We have a uh, we have this Web three Summit node. Uh, I didn't get a chance to put it on the GitHub uh, Zen Hub yes, thing, but yes, uh, oh, it is there. Nice. So. Uh, Basically, I mean, I, I emailed them to get more information. I don't know how many tables we have or anything, but pretty much my on it was that we push uh, all of our projects, right? And mm -hmm. project could have a table. Uh, we'll have on the late on Wednesday so that people have time to find the room and find out about the talks. And uh, we'll, we can do project demos. Uh, different. Damn, Griff, you have a really bad connection. Maybe you should try without video. Uh, you seem to be back now. Go ahead.
Griff? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> he thinks he's not connected, but we can see you. <laughs> okay, so in any case, the, we need to get the <laughs> from the hacker space. That's what I, um, from, uh, from the Web3 team. What, how many tables and what we'll have. Griff? Mm, okay. Well, um, yeah, my question was indeed there, like, do we need to, my most important question there was, do we need to have any materials that need to be like still produced? I know we have our give it <laughs> big banners. Oh, and we lost him. And, um, but I don't, are, do you know Kai? They're probably just in Barcelona, right? Um, who is in Barcelona, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> the, so for the Web3 Summit, we have the hacker space and um, we have, I think we have the banners, right? Griff knows in Barcelona, I, I would say. I think so too. And he seems to be back. Almost. Yeah. Sorry. Apparently, no problem. <laughs> apparently the internet at, at Yellowstone is not very good. Ah, you're so at far. Yellowstone now. Cool. I was there <laughs> just before you. No, I wasn't at Yellowstone. I was at Yosemite. I was confused now. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the question I had was just like, do we need any extra materials? So you have the, I think we have two of these big flags, the give it flags still in Barcelona and the yeah, banner. So I don't think we need more flags necessarily. Well, we'll probably want one banner for the room. That's like, you know, I, I call it blockchain based in, uh, organizations now, right? Maybe with like a give it logo underneath it. Uh, but that was kind of the theme. How do we, how you know, how do we create showcasing the projects that are trying to push forward blockchain-based entities and what's needed? You know, uh, that's that's basically the theme. And then uh, it would be so it'd be nice to get some kind of banner or something to represent that for the room, right? And then uh, we need to create a schedule and probably get like eventually some kind of like postcard that we can hand out with the schedule for that room. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I luckily will have people on the ground. So like uh, I'm well, well enough connected to, to you're gonna have to mute me. Someone has an echo. Someone needs to be muted. <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, so we'll, we'll be able to get like instructions on how to get to the room or any of these details and put that on a postcard along with a schedule for talks. I uh, will need some sh Argon swag, uh, but the big thing is like, what about Dapnode? Does Dapnode have uh, you know a banner? Does does Occam's or IDEN three? Uh, what about Ethcan or any of these other projects that I hope to showcase? Mm -hmm. uh, bright ID, if any of those Bright ID guys are around, um, all these people are going to need some paraphernalia to pass out. Yeah, and so for all that, I don't mind, um, you know, I told you, like, I, I, it's been a while anyways, I've been in Berlin, and and I don't mind organizing this and, and like, contacting them and, and, and getting it all together in the room in time and, and seeing how we can promote it before, if you, if you need someone for that. Yeah, and we get two free tickets, so I was going to give those tickets to the people who are organizing. And I did imagine you and Linz being the lead organizers on this. Okay, cool. Okay, then, but then um, I, I wrote down what you said. Um, then we can maybe, um, I'll, I'll write down in like a few words based on, on how you wrote it in the application form. Like, hey, this could be like maybe, I was thinking that we have like a visual it's not a logo, but just like the the um, blockchain-based organizations now that we have a visual thingy for this that we can use on our digital documents um, and that we can use to promote it on Twitter and other places. And then we can have that one also printed physically to have in the room. And and for the rest, we can probably just use indeed the give it material that we have, plus the new t-shirts yeah. by Kai. And I would, I, I honestly don't really like the title blockchain based entities now. It was just something I came up with, like within, I needed to put something down. And so if we can find 
you know, maybe blockchain states or blockchain nations or block, you know, blockchain orgs or I don't know, non-legal entities. I don't know, like something, anything. It, it might be worth at least brainstorming for a day that title. What do you think, Kai? I don't know if it should still be there. But what I was thinking was just I'll drop um, um, I'll drop the for the title. I can just ask in the communication channel, ask people like, hey, this is what we're going to do. Give us your brainstorm with us. Just do a live brainstorm in there, and we'll get maybe a, a, some nice proposals there. Yeah, and I'll paste uh, the email that I wrote the guy that also has some other info on it. Is it more than the what you sent to me? Because that one I already put in the issue. Oh, yeah. Perfect. No, I it's the that. same one. It's in the issue. It's perfect. So I'll I'll use that as like to explain to people what we're doing, and then they can maybe come up with a cool title, and then once we have that, I'll drop it in the design channel, and then someone can pick it up to come up with a cool design for the visual thingy, and then we'll cool. dish out points. Yeah. Points. Points. Um, points. Cool. And then, uh, well, does anyone else have any thoughts on this topic, the node in Berlin? Is anyone else going to be able to be in Berlin? Yeah, I should be. Yeah, Dean. Cool. And hi, Dean. You, you, yeah. uh, hello. That <laughs> signals Lorelei. definitely needs some like banners or something, too. Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. So um, whatever whatever that already exists for other projects, we definitely also need to, um, to find. So if you're there, Dean, definitely join us. Um, uh, I was just wondering for the the schedule, Griff. So you'll be there, so you can, I guess, talk about Yaragon DAC. Um, Voitech won't be there, so then you or I can also talk about what Giveth is all about. But I think you you're the best at it, so I, <laughs> I have no. I was mostly gonna MC the room. Mm -hmm. I'll uh, I'll fill in stuff or ask good questions or leading questions. Was kind of how I envisioned it. Uh, that's, but we'll see, uh, we'll see how it turns out and if people want to do demos or if, what people want to do and we'll have the space and time and we'll just have to try to schedule around talks that I think people will all want to go to. So it's mm -hmm. not, uh, you know, I, 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 we have three days. I don't want anything on Monday. So it's basically Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll have space to fill talks and we'll just have like, you know, maybe a couple back-to-back -back talks, but I'll try to avoid like if Vlad's talking or Vitalik's talking or somebody like that, Gavin would, then we just won't go during that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Um, okay, any other thoughts from people? Lorelai, you will be there as well, right? Yes, I will. Cool. And do you see a class for yourself, something that you would like to help out with? Sorry, what are you asking? Yeah, for the, for the, um, when, when we're there, if you want to help out with the hacker space in some way, if you see something. Yeah, that... for sure. If I end up with the ticket to Web3, I applied, um, but I don't know yet if I'll have one. Um, but I'm happy to also organize us around social times in Berlin as well, outside of the hackathon space. Hey, <laughs> cool. Um, okay. I have another topic. Yeah. Uh, one of the big things that <clears throat> um, I think we should push <clears throat> this new year uh, is uh, fundraising. Yep. And I think that for the most part falls under the comms department. So, uh, uh, Linz, I'm, I'm almost thinking Linz should just join communications and start getting funding out of comms. And, uh, you and Linz, Linz can kind of, I'm, I'm curious if, uh, you and Linz would be interested in pushing the com, the fundraising portion of this. Um, I'm definitely interested in pushing the fundraising um, or help with it. Um, I um, I talked a little bit with with Parker as well. I don't think he's here uh, because he was he has his grant campaign now, 
and that's just grants, of course, but still, I think there's still quite some opportunities there. Um, I heard that we had some bad news about the Nest grant, uh, but there are some other open things. I run into like donation initiatives all the time that are like for bigger, that more grant style things. And I asked him before if he was not interested to like lead this and keep an overview of, okay, these are all the funds coming in and going out and um, doing more of a, a this financial kind of overview and help uh, join meetings, see, be, become the specialist in this. And he was really interested in this. Um, but I can for sure help, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what you think of this, first of all. <laughs> I see fundraising as three main uh, areas of fundraising. There's mm -hmm. the grants, which Parker is already on top of. And I feel like, uh, I don't feel like we fully exhausted it, but we no. probably will exhaust it relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's uh, finding one big uh, donor, like finding a donor that wants to continually like back different things that Giveth does and finding people that want to support Giveth as a project. To do that, for that to be effective, we definitely need a new website uh, that fully explains <laughs> more about what we're doing and, and stuff along those lines. Mm -hmm. And then um, and then the other one is like crowds, crowdfunding. Uh, I, in general, for all three of these, uh, I think that it'll, oh, well, let me say crowdfunding. So we have we have our DAP, it's great. People can just actually donate to each individual milestone. For instance, uh, we're sponsoring DevCon, right? I made a milestone for it and we can just post the link to that in general and maybe on like give it uh, promotion things and see if anyone wants to donate a little bit to support our sponsorship with DevCon. Uh, actually, for that one specifically, I'm hoping to find someone that we can sell a ticket to, basically, because we do get two tickets. Mm -hmm. um, and we can say, hey, uh, sponsor, get, sponsor our sponsorship, and you'll get one of the tickets. And then the other ticket will just go to someone in, in, uh, in here. But like, I think everyone should have to pay like the 600 So then we'll put that as a donation to another thing so then we actually will get like 2600 uh worth of, we'll get a free sponsorship and 600 dollars to the main to the main pot right uh the, at least that's my plan with the olympic sponsorship and then uh but I, I would love to use that as a test case well that's that's sorry i would love to use something as a test case to see if we can get it funded so maybe it can be our airbnb for devcon promotion right uh, which will eventually be a, a thing like how's the givethers while they ex while they you know promote giveth at uh, DevCon, and we'll see if we can actually raise some money using our using our DAP. It'd be really interesting. So that's kind of the crowdfunding approach. It's not easy. It's definitely not easy while everyone is getting poorer every day, right? <laughs> like when the market's going down, it's basically impossible to raise money. Uh, it's really easy to raise money when all of a sudden someone has a hundred thousand dollars and then they have a hundred and fifty. Then it's like, wow, well, yeah, I can share. You know. But on the other uh, hand, if we raise money now, it's perfect because it will be worth so much more soon. So oh, we should of do it. course, of course, yeah. we need to be pushing it and we need to be ready for when the market turns, so that yep. we have like a, a. But we can't be discouraged. We have to have expectations, real, realistic expectations that. We're practicing for when the market goes up because mm. we're gonna have a lot of trouble. But even grants are getting tighter. Everyone's getting tighter. That's just the way it is. When ether goes from fourteen hundred to two hundred, every everybody gets tighter. You know. Yeah, of course. Yeah. What's um, up, Don? Yeah. Yeah. Just a, a quick thought um, on what you were saying. I wonder if like, I wonder if it makes sense to say that some X percentage of any ether raised now gets put aside. So that when the market, you know, if and when the market turns back, that'll be a nice uh, thing to be sitting on. Because obviously, I mean, yeah, any any money that's raised now, it's sort of an urgent time to be having money to pay people. But then, it's not going to even go very far. 
mm-hmm. whatever we are able to raise. Just a thought. I muted you for a second, Grant. You, for a second, Grant. you were echoing. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I mean, I, I'm down for, <laughs> I'm down for anything that sells, basically. Um, in, in the end, like we do have one angel investor, right here. So like, uh, we're not ever gonna run out of money, but uh, at least as long as we don't go through way too much cash, uh, we should be good for the next year, even if Ether stays up, goes down to one fifty or a hundred. But um, uh, if if saying that we'll save a portion of all donations for later uh, helps us get donations, then I'm in for it. You know, but uh, the, there is a technical problem with that if we're u- <clears throat> if we're using the DAP, you know, because you get to donate directly to a milestone and then it gets used in that milestone. And there isn't like a good way to like take the portion, portion out. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, but if they give to the DAC, then um, then it's possible, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could have a campaign that's like future campaign. Right? Yeah. Um, good points. I'm writing that one down for sure. For the thing that you said, Griff, um, for the, um, the 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 ID for the Web three ticket. Um, yeah, do you, what do you want to what do you want to do there? Just like, do you want me to like do this, or do you, do you have do we want to brainstorm a little bit about it first, or what do you see? Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you're talking Web three or for DevCon? Oh, it's for DevCon that you have another ticket. Well, so for our DevCon sponsorship, we get two free tickets. Okay. Now I have to figure out if we really get two free tickets or how that exactly works. But what I want to do is sell one of the tickets for the 11 point something ether that it costs to do the sponsorship to someone external that didn't get a ticket. And that should be really easy. That should be really easy. And I don't know how DevCon will feel about that. I'm glad this is live streamed. We can just point them to this video and ask them. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, and then the other one we would sell to someone internally that needs to needs a ticket for the 600 builder cost that everyone else is basically paying, uh, and then that would just go to the DAC in Ether. Uh, okay. That's that's my thoughts with the scholar this uh, with the whatever it is sponsorship. With the Web three summit, we get two free tickets, but we're not going to sell them. We're just going to. I was just going to give them to. Yeah, I mean, I think that we will, the governance campaign will just cover any tickets that of people that are going to the Web3 Summit to work the uh, work that room, mm-hmm. at least uh, if they're given people. And mm-hmm. then, uh, yeah, and then those two tickets also are part of that. So, uh, Chris, you were thinking about coming to Berlin, right? If you, yep. if you wanted to help organize that, you would come? Yep. Hell yeah. <laughs> and, and I assume Linz as well. I'm I'm kind of thinking you and Linz are going to become like the main comms team. If that's cool, you guys seem to work together well. Yeah. Um, let me think about that one. Um, but uh, I don't know if Linz wants to do comms in general. Um, but she does like do our. She she does like doing organization, of course, which is part of comms. Yeah, the organization of events and uh, and asking for money those are two things that she's totally down to do so <laughs> at least on in that in that adventure uh i think she's a great fit for comms maybe not so much like you know running comms meetings or uh making blog posts or anything like that although mm. we did have a talk about reward DAO and we want to have like a monthly blog post of the results of reward DAO that she's excited to write that's cool. Um, I'll get back to you on the reward though, but let's maybe skip that to later uh, so that, that we have some time left for other things that are purely comms. Um, okay, so for uh, these things, I'll let you get back on uh, for the fundraising uh, test. Just confirm if we have the two tickets and then we can just like uh, promote a little bit and, and, and that's the first step there. Um, and then I'll let's also see like how uh, 
how Linz could help with the fundraising part. That would be cool. Um, specific also, yeah, for Web3, uh, we discussed DEF CON. Um, there, we did not get in as a speaker, as far as, far as I heard from Wojtek, um, unfortunately. But we do have, uh, just before there's the, the status hackathon, uh, or at the same time, or, or just before. And so there, Wojtek is a judge. So we have some presence over there. Um, and there's also the Ethereum Magicians uh, Council uh, meeting at the same time. Um, is there anything? Oh yeah, and we are sponsoring DEF CON, right? So for the sponsoring, my main question was first of all for DEF CON itself. What Wait, does we're that sponsoring in? Ethereum Magicians? No, no, we're sponsoring DEF CON. Yes. And so what does that entail? What do we have to do? What does it give us? I, it gives gives us the two free tickets. It will we I gave them a logo. I gave them the giveth G with giveth underneath written, uh, and that will go on a lot of banners and stuff. But that's about it. Uh, okay. We don't get anything else for that. Although I do want to, I, I think at the status hackathon and also uh, I'm helping to organize a party for that Vlad Zamfir is trying to push with uh, Helena from Parity. Uh, Holly from Only Say Go, or formerly of Only Say Go, and a few other organizer people. Uh, so I think we could also pass out some shirts at that party too. Cool. Um, and um, yeah, so that, I think for DEF CON, that's it, right? We just we just show up and we'll just talk about giving it to people. <laughs> yep, we show up walking around with our t-shirts and yeah, and we promote blockchain for good, you know? Cool, cool. Um, okay, that's DEF CON. Um, what else is urgent that we need to talk about that I remembered? Um, Team Rins was here. Yeah. No, go ahead. Sorry, I'm not watching my screen enough. Go yeah, ahead, so Dean. it's about DEF CON and also about the hackathon. Mm -hmm. um, so do we have a accommodation um, while like in the status hackathon also? Or only for the DEF CON? We don't have accommodation for the status hackathon. We, we have accommodation starting October 29th uh, to the 6th. And I think we can take like 16 people. So, yeah. uh, and I think you guys, uh, and there's a spreadsheet for that. We will have, uh, I am looking to book accommodation for the Web3 um, thing, uh, the Web3 Summit in Berlin. Uh, and hopefully we'll do that in the next couple of days. Uh, but we need numbers. So it's hard to book a comment, you know, uh, so yeah. there's the in the same spreadsheet where the the prog houses there's a tab for the web3 summit so uh, if you guys are going to that please put your name down and we'll make sure we have accommodation yeah and for for uh, status deem I think if you contact them so um, they they might have something where you can you can probably stay with the team we know them well so they might be interested but they may might even have foreseen something I don't know uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, the link for the um, housing doc is in Unicorn's team, so you should be able to find it there. Okay, thanks. I, I wanted to go with Kai to the status hackathon. Cool. So that, that's why. Yeah, I think I think you should definitely. So, um, but maybe if if one of you could check with them, um, they're they're even in our they're even in our riot hanging around. But um, I don't know if so. You're. The people to whom you applied, you can maybe just ask the question. There's probably on the hackathon just to contact details and just ask them if there's accommodation possibilities, I would say. Yeah, uh, yeah, we, we will find out. It always helps to say that we're that we're a nonprofit and that we need some support, you know? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and whatever you find, Dean, uh, please uh, tell the rest of us too. Um, yeah. if they recommend a hostel or whatever they recommend, just throw it on unicorns. Yeah, definitely, because I don't know what, if Wojtek already booked something, but if not, he'll definitely be interested too. Cool. Um, other specific things that you want to talk about? Because I, I just wanted to say, so I'm going to finish the, 
the status of the DAP um, post that I have open, um, that I, I wrote a draft. Danny gave lots of um, uh, feedback, which is great, thank you. So I'll integrate that. I'll double check with Vortec if he's seen it as well. I'll send it to Griff so that Griff can have a, a look at it too. And then we can publish it. Like this is where we are at with the DAP. Um, and um, what else? So that's that's when I'm on. Um, I'm gonna work a little bit for for Aragon because they want uh, a review of their newsletter. So I'm gonna sync with that too on that tomorrow. That's an, another thing I'm working on. I created the agenda for our call on Friday. Everyone is always welcome to join. Um, these are the things that were top of mind for me. Um, other things you guys are thinking about that you wanted to talk about today? Hmm. I'm just happy that we're back in action, you know? Yes, me too. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, and I, well then I did have another Thing. Oh yeah, with with Lorelai, can we? Uh, you were I saw in the in the governance meeting that you were um, going to continue with the unicorn DAC, which is great. So I was wondering, can we? Um, when can we have our next roles meeting? Good question. Um, we can put out a little doodle poll for a meeting time since we haven't really set a regular one yet. Mm -hmm. um, I'll put out a doodle today and then hopefully we can just discuss it really quickly, the date in the Gov meeting tomorrow. Cool, that would be nice. Um, what I, my feedback there would be that if we put a date or if you put, put like, okay, this is like the first date we do it, that we try by that date, that everyone actually commits to completing it because I don't think many people have actually mm -hmm. done it, unfortunately, so that we can, <laughs> that we can have this our voting system and all the things we talked about otherwise it's just going to be a lot of talk and that's exactly what we didn't want to have so just that um but it would be cool if we can uh, continue with the roles and uh, it's going to bring a lot of clarity and stability for people i, I really am a big supporter of it yeah nice. have another so, question dean go ahead yeah, so um, how far behind are we with the reward DAO? Or, um... Yeah, that is that is indeed the thing I wanted to keep to the end. Um, we are behind. Uh, we should organize our next meeting um, because it's the 19th already, but it's going to be a quick one because not a lot of people gave points for this one. But we still, as far as I know, Griff, um, it's cool if Lindsay wants to write a post but the previous one hasn't even been closed off yet, as far as I know. So, so yeah, there were only three videos that were posted for the for the month of for August fifteenth, uh, the one that ended on August fifteenth, and because basically the whole month, uh, everyone was at Burning Man, uh, all four leads were at Burning Man, and uh, didn't actually do dish very many points. Uh, I think we're just going to combine. Well, I I think for me, in my opinion, I think it'd be cool to start to like end. I have to talk to Lens because this is Roar Dow is Lens's game, but I'd like to kind of make this section a forty-five day section, and start on the first. <laughs> How cool would that be? If if our Reward Dow month started on the first and ended it at the end of the month, I don't know. Just the thought. But that's 30 days, that's not 45, it stays 30, well, right? Well, it'll be August 15th till... End of this month. Uh, end of this month, so it'll include, it will be 45 days. A one-time 45, uh, sure. Yeah, yeah our one-time 45, so we can follow the Gregorian calendar. Uh, <laughs> I think someone said that Danny. they had something. Yeah, Danny, you had a question. Well, I, I just wanted to... You just talked about reward now and said you want that at the end. And I have some other things I wanted to just spout off, I guess, a little bit. Um, so is now a good time for that? Uh, sure. Um, but first, if, if it's not about the reward now, I just wanted to still add um, that, sure, that's cool, Griff. Let's do that. Um, but then, so 
if you say that it's Lindsay's game, that's cool. But then she has not, um, of course, she was also at Burning Man. But you had the call last week about a reward now. So it would be cool then that she also takes commits to pushing people to make videos. So I, I don't mind at all to now again do an at room and tag all the people who haven't made their video yet to make it. But if Linz want to commit to do reward DAO, it would be cool if she does it. If she doesn't, fine, then I'll do it. But I just want to know because if it, that's why there is no videos because we don't follow up ourselves. So what do you propose there? I, I do think that we pushed it during the, during the time, uh, like around the time. I think we at least did the at room and stuff, but no one was paying attention. So doing re revisiting it giving them a do we not even do an at room well, there wasn't even an at room there was no push whatsoever to say for the reward out which just silence oh okay I concur with that chris yeah so that's okay. the thing we <laughs> i was paying attention <laughs> <laughs> So okay. I can do it, but I just that's just my feedback. It's cool if Lindsay wants to do a monthly blog post, but for the moment she's not even committing to actually follow up like I did before, right? I tagged everyone, hey, you got you got points. Now make your video, which is like the public, not shaming, but yeah, yeah. writing. Um, and it helped to because they responded immediately, and it's, it works even better than an at room. Um, people click away in at room. So yeah. I'll do it this time, but maybe it would be cool if you if you talk to Lindsay for something else that you just push her to also do this because if there's no follow up then then she's not the right person for reward down because it's important. Yeah. Otherwise our system, sure. kind of collapses. our system kind of collapses. A quick thought too. Um I I definitely like found myself getting tripped up by the fact that you know the the periods start and end in the middle of the month. And like, did I submit my video for this month or for last month and all that? So if there is a way to follow up with people who haven't done it, um, who haven't submitted their videos, I feel like that might lead to better results. Yeah, I think so too, because now they just lose their ETH. And that's sometimes just because, yeah, we're all busy and many people have other jobs as well. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I think individual messages work way better than at room i mean that's just the way it is like you send yeah. someone a private message and then boom they will respond and they'll make a video you know? mm -hmm. or they won't or they which won't is fine too, which is fine. Is there a bot for that? <laughs> sorry denny i was just thinking can is there a bot for that, <laughs> that when, <laughs> when someone I mean, gets this points it shoots them a message with a bit of information bit of information there should be a bot i think because i mean it seems like an issue that's going to come up every month no, uh -huh. I think I agree with Griff. Personally, I agree with Griff that it's like the personal contact helps best, and and a bot sending you a message is like, and it's it's a quick thingy to just ask like, hey, there's like twenty or thirty people getting eat. Let's just like, uh, hey, make a video, please, and and then we need to contact them anyways. So okay, yeah. I'll do it for the, this. The worst, one. Yeah, it, it gets discouraging because Linz was doing this. Linz mm -hmm. was doing individual personal messages. And then no one was responding to her, yeah. and it's yeah. really discouraging, of you know. Course. And why no one, I mean, like seventy percent of people, just wouldn't respond. They wouldn't join the room because Riot is kind of annoying. On that, you know, it's not like you just get to send them a message like on Telegram. They just get the message, right? Yeah. Here they have to join the room, wait for it to load, then like, oh, who is this random person that wants to join a room with me? I don't even know, Linz. Of you know. course. Yeah, and so. that, that's the thing that for me that the at that person in the room and contributors could work too. That's how I did it before because then, then they see their name as well. Yeah. So yeah. I'll do this one for now. So to like, uh, and also to announce that we'll do one and a half month. Um, and then maybe indeed Linz can just follow up. And if we then do a blog post every time, that will be cool uh, because it's extra promotion, of course, for the things that we're doing. Um, um, oh yeah, sorry, keep going on about reward now, but it's an important one. So, and we have, I have all of you guys now. So Yaler said he doesn't want to participate anymore in the reward now. Um, so Deem, is this something, do you, if you believe in the reward now, do you want to still keep on dishing points for social coding or do you have any thoughts on this? Uh, right now I haven't been dishing up not many points. So uh, I'm, I haven't been, voted, been voting either, but 
seems like Yela are doing the the job right now. Yeah, I'll, and I'll talk. I'll talk to Yela and get more feedback on that because I should see him today. Cool. Yeah. So because yeah, we worked a lot on on the bot. <laughs> we finally have it, and it's a great way way to just incentivize people to work. And we kind of all agreed on this. But if one of our circles now goes out, it's of course a little bit. We have to read. Yeah, it comes less. Yeah. And especially for me, for social coding, it's a cool one, right? Yeah, exactly. Social coding is the best, the most important one. So if they don't want to do it, then maybe it's not working. Yeah. Um, but Danny, you had a bunch of things to say about reward now. Yeah. I was about other stuff, but go ahead. <laughs> oh, me. Sorry, am I on? Yeah, it's your turn. Sorry. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so one, the first thing is because we're on the, I'm looking at the comms board in ZenHub, and I see a lot of issues that have either blocking because of the onboarding position or just have relationship to the onboarding. So I had seen there were a lot of issues on there. I'd like, I, I went in and updated the roles document that I'm doing that, but I also understand that there's some clarification, to, like I'm doing onboarding for the DAP. Right. Um, Lorelai's produced a document for onboarding unicorns. So I feel like there's some clarification around onboarding unicorns, makers, um, givers, contributors, um, just understanding that. So maybe that's something in the roles meeting I'd like to discuss further so that um, because I, I'll want to do all the things, but I definitely want to make sure I'm focusing on the things that are mine. Um, to take responsibility for. So from onboarding perspective and that role of mine, um, anything we can do to clean up those issues, I'm happy to jump in there and help with, Chris. If we're not gonna go through them here in this meeting, maybe we can do that separately. Definitely, this is a really good idea. Uh, this this is indeed not cleaned up entirely and with, with you now jumping in, it would be good to, to have a call anyways, one of these days and to see like, hey, what, what are you working on and, and is, where where could where do you need help or the other way around etc and then we can uh, update those issues but uh, I, I think yeah and i think you um it, indeed if you have it clearly in the roles document it shouldn't be an issue because how i see it and i think lorelei is, agrees is just that lorelei is working on the onboarding thing for like regular more regular people joining our team and you're working on onboarding for um for communities right Right, like users of the DAP itself. Mm -hmm. And also, but I, I can help in those other realms too, I guess is what I'm saying, um, where it's needed. So a couple other things I had on my list. Um, I'm doing a thorough review of the white paper right now. I don't have any feedback on that. I don't know if that's an issue or anything, but I, I guess I just want to kind of touch on the things that I'm touching right now. Um, I would love to have some user feedback uh, from people who have been using, giveth folks using the dad. Like, I don't know how the dog food tastes, basically. Uh, so, just wondering from you guys, would it be better for me just to create a form, a feedback form, and put it out there? Would you guys have interest in interviewing with me personally to give me your feedback? on how things oh, are. I see thumbs up from Griff. Um, so this is specifically so, about the depth, right? Yeah, this is pretty specific. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Hell yeah. Like, I want to hear, give it people are our current users, our first users, our alpha folks. So we're shifting into beta. So we should kind of have a flag that says, hey, how does everybody feel right now about your experience to date? So um, I'd like to gather that. And it um, sounds like interviewing would be a good way to go. Plus, it'll give me a chance to connect with people. So I'll put that out into the rooms that I am I would like to schedule some interviews. And if folks uh, don't have time for that, I can also put together a little form. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Um, it's, it's the thing we need um, at some point. Well, we did. Uh, well, we have our release testing room. Um, first, you know that one, um, and you have a, of course, some, sorry? 
Yes, so yeah. release testing is probably the first place to start. Well, I would say start indeed with us because we're the active users. So that I think that's a good idea. And then in, you can, with our interviews combined with um, the survey questions that that uh, Wojtek made before uh, for testing, and we because he had this re, uh, this testing script. If you use uh, if if you use this while interviewing us and you combine this. Then you can do something in the for the release testers. You can maybe use a form. That's mingling my thoughts, but I, that that's what I think that would make sense. First, you interview us, and then you can maybe work with a form for the release testers because there's more people there. That's my opinion. Yeah, thank you for that because I think if I at least chat with a couple of you guys, some themes will come up that I can. My brain thinks in databases, so once I have a little bit of information, then I can compile what are some key points we want to ask repeatedly to measure improvement kind of get a baseline right now of where we're at, where do we want to be, let's get there. Definitely. Okay, and then um, also on the DAP, so there, let's see, user feedback, release testing, uh, I feel like we're about to get into another round of release testing, and then bug status. Um, I guess those are some items that I would just, I'll just gather information from you guys on the interview process. But those are areas that I have big questions on and I want to understand more deeply. And I feel like that that's going to come from you guys as the users. I made 10 issues in the DAP uh, in the last couple of days. <laughs> You've been busy giving me stuff to research and uh, that's good. Yeah. Um, I guess, yeah. Did you have a thought on that, Chris? Yeah, no, I was just going to say, I see every time when I use the dab to make my own milestones, I create lots of issues, and Grip does the same. <laughs> so I think you'll have already some critical testers with us that you can interview. Yeah, and then the other thing I want to know is who's not creating issues, which means they're running into them and just stop not using it as actively because they're not familiar or comfortable reporting all the bugs. Uh, and then the last thing I wanted to talk about is I'm feeling like it's at least a good time to reach out to everybody who's expressed interest in using the DAP with a confirmation of interest in the beta. Not to say we're going to onboard people into the beta system right now, but at least to touch people and say, hey, you've indicated interest in Giveth before. We're starting, we, we are moving into beta. Are you still interested? And then sort of have some pre-qualification questions. So I'm wondering what you guys feel like the first set of users of the DAP would need to have. Like what level of sophistication with blockchain, for example, or with software testing? Or do we really want to look at what does this feel like from a, a totally new user perspective? So I'd love to hear any feedback that you guys have just from a preparing in for the future of when we do bring people in, how do I stage that? Like, what are some pre-qualifying conditions we would want people to meet? I if would, there are any. I would make sure that they have a GitHub account and know how to make issues because, yeah, it's definitely something that if you're going to onboard someone, they're going to need to be able to vent their frustration because right now the DAP is not, the DAP is going to use their time unnecessarily. So they need to know that they're running an experiment, that they're going to run into problems, and that they need to be have a GitHub account and be willing to make issues when they run into the problems so that they can get the feedback. Because if they just run into issues and they don't feel like there's a way to tell you about it, that's just going to turn them off. But if, yeah. they, if they really want to use it, and they know that there's a way to express their problems. Uh, that's the that's the best. And like um, uh, one thing that I've wanted, I need to make an issue of is like that little box that pops up report in Gmail. I would much rather have that have a button for report in GitHub. Uh, yeah, you know, instead yeah, of sending the yeah. email. Yeah, like change that button to be like report this issue. You know. Yep, and I totally talked to Wojtek about that when I made my milestone because if I just click the report, it opens a blank browser window and doesn't do anything. I actually have to use the report in Gmail for it to actually report. So that's 
a bug with the bug reporting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and also the big thing, like we don't have donors on the, on the app, app. So I really hope that we're pushing more for the people who want to donate money and less towards the people who want to receive money just because they're also going to become disenfranchised when they put all, all this effort and get nothing. Or maybe like I'll donate like $100 to people who do this, you know, just out of like pure pity almost <laughs> um, because they're going to put in a bunch of work to try to understand, you know, MetaMask and Ether and uh, all this stuff. Like hopefully they have that as a baseline that they have a wallet already. They already like know how to make transactions. They're not going to be confused about gas. I mean, I feel like that like for our first onboarding, they really need to have most of that stuff taken care of. Otherwise, we'll spend time explaining Ethereum to people as opposed to explaining the DAP to people. Yeah. I concur, uh, yes, with all of that. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Yeah, that, that could be, that could be, I agree with, with all of this as well. Um, and first I wanted to say like, hey, yeah, but you can also just, if you have a good feedback forum, then they have a place to go where they can have, like log all of the issues. But the, on, on the other hand, if you ask for them to have a GitHub account, it's a good qualification question because that already shows you, hey, they're in the space. They, they, they know what they're talking about and we won't have to explain everything from the start to them because they're already uh, developer minded at least. Um, yeah. And yeah, I mean, what, if, you, yeah. if you ask them for a GitHub account and a Ethereum address with a lot of activity on it, I mean, and if they have both of those, oh, that's a huge, that's a huge like, oh, this guy's pro probably pretty cool. You can go to their Ether scan and see like, oh, this guy's like trading. Mm -hmm. They're using these sentence exchanges. They're using other dApps. Have they ever used a dApp before, right? If you see somebody is using MakerDAO to create CDPs and like playing the die market, oh yeah, then we're cool. You know, they already know how to like stabilize their currency. They already understand the fact that Ether might tank and they lose 50% of the value of the money they raised. You know, like there's a lot of, whoa, hey, that you can kind of be like, okay, this guy's cool. Yep, indeed. And um, uh, also wanted to just mention the, um, this, the status of the DAP uh, article. That's one, I don't, you probably put it in the comments as well. I don't, I don't remember now how I exactly I put it in there. But it's it's a good one to refer to. So if you like just write, I don't know if you how you want to do it, but if you're just gonna send them a short email um, to see if they're still interested, you can of course link to them to that article and say like this is where we are at now, this is what we plan for the launch, etc. So that's probably gonna help too. Exactly. That's why I didn't send it yet. I actually have an email drafted in Soho that I'd like to send. But I want to have links to current information. Uh, before I before I touch anybody, um, and then the other, I guess I, I just want to follow up because what I heard from you both is confirmation of something that I was feeling, which is the ideal initial candidates would be a, an entity of some sort that has done some work already, that is familiar and and versed in blockchain and cryptocurrency, and also has donors potentially that are looking for a tool like the DAP. So the ideal scenario would be to find a cause that is active, that has people working on it, that has funders, that is ready to take that to a level on a DAP like this to show what they're up to uh, transparently. So to me, that's my ideal candidate. Definitely. Yeah. My ideal candidate is the ECF, the Ethereum Foundation, Social Alpha is Foundation is a really good one because they focus mostly on social, uh, you know, more charitable stuff. Uh, Status Incubate, uh, these different projects that actually are dishing out Ether, that if yeah. we get all of those foundations uh, on board uh, that dish out Ether, not only would they be interested in you know, using the DAP so they can collaborate together. We can also, right. we could also uh, 
you know, and they would put money in and they would be like, yeah, hey, you know, oh, you want to accept this grant? Sure, you know, uh, your your application has to be put on Giveth, right? That would be the dream. And then if all of them were on there, they could see if these people are reaching their funding goal without having to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. And and then, uh, yeah, and then different projects could just submit instead of submitting a grant application to seven different projects, seven different grant campaigns. They submit a grant. They submit. They make one campaign on Giveth that anyone can fund, especially these grant campaigns. And all of those grant campaigns, half of like F Prize and ECF, are not even legal entities. So it, there's actually a lot of value in them being able to coordinate on there. They take money from these different projects, and they just they could just say, "Hey, donate to this guy. We think this guy's good." They could go tell MakerDAO, "Hey, yeah, put twenty thousand dollars into this campaign." and they don't even have to touch it, right? They can be a true delegate. Like basically the Ethereum foundation groups that are funding people are the, in my opinion, the perfect first users of the DAP. And they're also, if we get them on there, they'd also be willing to fund the DAP because hey, look, they, you know, they're, they have millions of dollars behind them that they're looking to give away well, and they like this. If if we can get them to start liking this platform, then they could really also help fund us in our projects. Yes, <laughs> which is an okay. extra benefit. Yeah. So conscious language upgrade. Um, it's not a matter of if; it's when. When we're ready to bring them on, and it also because I, I, I from what I see when I read it online, and I've been doing a lot. Folks are re are watching for when we're ready. There's a lot of interest from all different directions already. It's been building. Um, so the when part is when are we ready? And then the who and the how, who's contacting them and how are we bringing them on board? So that kind of just circles me back. Like when I put myself into the roles meeting, I, I only put myself on the ones that looked like they were for, for makers using the DAP, but there's also an area of bringing on those givers. Um, so that's something that I'd, I'm putting a little flag in to understand. Is there somebody I can be working with that? Is that something that I'm going to be actively working? And uh, Vortex buying my ticket from Prague this week. So I do want to be that person having those conversations and getting people ready and building the relationships to bring them on when that time is right. Um, so, okay, that's what I have to share. Thank you. No, that's fantastic. Yeah. Thanks, Danny. That was that was really awesome. Yeah, communication. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. This this is exactly um, what what we needed. Someone like you to to give us updates on on what can happen with the DAP and and that communication people can help you as well if you need stuff reviewed, etc. And you're also reviewing stuff for communication, so it's fantastic. Good. Um, so. Um, I think we can call it. We're already a little bit late, um, unless anyone has anything else that is urgent to talk about or not urgent and just wants to raise it. Nope. Three, two, one. Uh, so then we do a quick checkout. Thank you so no, much. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, um, sorry, sorry, I was late. Hi, um, Paul. <laughs> hey. Um, uh, I just want to say that I'm I'm organizing a side event to the One Young World conference. I'm going to be there for for work for my my day job, and I'm organizing a side event um, that will deal with blockchain for good. Um, I don't know if it's going to have much traction. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, One Young World is the biggest youth empowerment conference in the world. It has more than three thousand five hundred delegates. Um, from the ages to 18 to 30 and they come from either big corporations like Citibank or from the most ghetto uh, uh, social enterprise in the deepest part of South Sudan that deals with women empowerment. So that's the, that's the beauty of it um, and there's going to be a lot, a lot of people that are going to be interested in, in, in networking and in starting cool things. So I'm just going to see what what can we do and if we can um, get more people excited. 
I know that we're not ready for full on onboarding, but um, we can at least bring awareness. Where where is this? It's in The Hague. Ah, okay. In Netherlands. Yeah. Okay. Ah, that's uh, on your European trip, right? Yeah, correct. And the dates are nineteenth. Seventeen to twenty. Seventeen to twenty. Well, that that I mean, I could I. I mean, I'm a little weary. I guess it's com that could be like the conference, you know, two week period. I'm a little weary of doing too many, but I think I could probably make that. Of October? Yeah. That's yeah. the same dates as the thing in Barcelona. Oh. Yeah, it's when you're going to be in Barcelona normally. Damn. But um, will um, you. Hmm? That reminded me, I have an event I wanted to share about as well. Um, uh, yeah, Paul, uh, sorry, sorry, Lorelai. I just wanted to ask for Paul, are you going to present there or are you just going to go and talk about us or how do you see this? Yeah, on this on this side event, I want to get people to, to talk about what they, what, how they think blockchain can help and, and me, I'm going to be talking about give as well, yeah. But it's just an, uh, more of a uh, of an informal talk. It's not a real presentation. Mm, yeah. Well, I'm I'm trying to actually get a room from the organizers. But during one of the like uh, networking sessions, br um, like uh, coffee breaks or something like this, trying to to get a side room or something from them so we can actually um, have a bit more 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 of a serious talk. Okay. And the CSR Asia. You I wrote this down a while back. So yes. What's happening so with that one? CSR Asia is happening right now, mm. but uh, I had a customer meeting in Singapore, and we've been three days in workshops now, so I couldn't attend. Ah, okay. Cool. Um, sorry, Laurel, I interrupted you completely. Go ahead. That's okay. That's okay. It wasn't time yet. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Let's just hear. Is there anything else, Lansky, that you think you want on, on this Hague topic? I will say that Sacha is in the the short train ride oh, for him. Right. I'm sure that I'm sure that he would love to go to that. Uh, yeah. And I, I don't know how close that is to Deem, but Deem in Denmark, is, I think that's a relatively maybe a ferry ride. So uh, the, ride. those guys, those guys well, would the, definitely what the conference in itself. I think it's it's quite hard to to, to get in. I think that the tickets are are, are over. And uh, and also they're like four thousand euros. Um, yeah, so I don't think it's worth it because it's a very large uh, audience, anyways. Yeah. Exactly, and it's not it's not very targeted. It's a bit more of a of a spray and pray sort of thing. Yeah. Spray and pray is cool though because there's a lot of people that would be interested. Yeah, in no, no. This is this is the type of people that we that we want to get a lot of spray on. Yeah, especially like yeah, all of exactly. these all of these people in our. Africa that that will need um, that, that need ways of, of getting money there very quick. Um, I think that would be uh, they're a good target. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Uh, is there anything else on on this on this one? No. Um, no, I, I don't think so. Lorelai, go okay, ahead. Sorry, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to share about this humanistic management conference. You guys might remember that back when we were in Switzerland, I had met with this guy who's the head of the International Humanistic Management Network, which mm -hmm. is a really cool network of people around the globe that are all doing governance experiments um, and testing out various different forms um, like Holacracy and many others. And they're having a conference in Bengaluru uh, really soon actually it's like october 1st and 2nd um but wait Paul, no I wait i'm i mean i'm in bangalore you are yes that's so cool you should go <laughs> i was like i really want to reach out to you because i know you're at least somewhat close to india <laughs> but you're actually there right now yeah well not not now now in singapore but at the the first and second i will be there that is so cool. Okay, um, I'm going to connect to you. And um, yeah, if anyone else wants to, can think of anyone who would be relevant to, um, I just think this is a cool network for us to be connected to. Um, and Lansky, I will 
uh, send you a private message about that and we can get you linked there. That and the cool. theme is tech. So it's humanistic management in the world of like tech revolution. So it's, um, yeah, it's a cool place to drop in. Awesome. Cool, cool. Um, then that's it for today, I think. Three, two, one. Um, so thank you everyone for all the input. I'm so happy the board will be back up to date and I'm so happy to see you all of you again and um, see you next week. A lot on the to-do list um, and I give it to Lorelei because I see her on my screen. <laughs> yeah, great meeting. Nice to touch back in. I'm so glad for that synchronicity, Lansky. And I will give it to you to check out, Lansky. Thank you. Um, sorry, sorry, I was late. And and as as usual, I'm, I'm really happy that that we're all back, and um, me myself included, which have been a bit out as well. And I give it to Danny. Thank you. Um, this has been really awesome. I crave. Uh, welcome, encourage feedback uh, of all different sorts, especially the constructive sort that I can do things with. So thank you for all you've given me here in this meeting and feel free to give me more at any time. And I'll pass it over to Chris. And I give it to Griff. I already checked that. <laughs> thank you guys. It's so good that we're back in progress. Look at all this fucking action. Uh, it's pretty exciting. So uh, I'm amped up. Let's uh, keep this going. Is there anyone else? Uh, is Adam still there? No, I think Adam and Dean both left. Uh, so I think that's bad. it. Yeah, I had to leave, leave early too. Okay, thank you guys. See you next time and see you during the week as well. Bye. See you. Thank you. Bye. Love you guys. See ya. <laughs> Thanks, Chris, for holding it down. I hope you took notes of all these events and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I was writing it all down in the notes. You're the um, best. Sure. <laughs> and now that you're still there, Griff, still quickly wanted to ask you, how did it go with uh, Voitech? <laughs>